All right, here's the next one, 4-3, bone structure. So we're going to start out with anatomy of a long bone, and then we're going to do um, flat bones. We don't typically get into the bone structure of the other ones because they're all made up of the same stuff. So we're going to start with a typical long bone, which would be like a femur. So we're going to use this femur right here. And it's made up of, of a couple different parts. This one right here, you can see, is called the diaphysis. And it is pretty much the main length. Whoops, where did my marker go? There it is. It's the main length of the bone. And so we refer to it as the shaft of the bone. It's made out of a couple different parts. It's got this outer portion right here, which is called the collar and it's made out of thick compact bone and then we have the inside hollow portion which is called the medullary cavity because if you remember the word medulla like in your hair means middle so this is the middle cavity middle medulla and this is a middle area that contains red and yellow bone marrow depending on how old you are um, as a, an infant and for a little while this is all red and then as you get older this gets filled with yellow fat mm, yummy so the red marrow makes blood, the yellow marrow just stores fat for us. So isn't that nice to think you have fat inside of your bones? Yum! Okay, the next part is the epiphysis, which is the tops and the bottoms of it. And the epiphysis, as you remember the word epi, means on top of. <clears throat> so the epiphysis is just the ends of the bone, which are usually larger in diameter. So if we look at the diameter here, compared to the diameter here, you can see much wider than the rest of the bone. Same thing down here. It is made up of both compact bone in the outer regions and spongy bone in the middle regions, and it is usually covered with articular cartilage. Remember, articular is a type of hyaline cartilage that covers the ends of bones where they articulate with another type of bone. The only one where this doesn't happen would be on the end of the tibia, the distal end of the tibia, no, let me try that again. The distal end of the femur, the proximal end of the tibia, because that is where the fibrocartilage is found. Um, let me see. Let me check something real quick if it says it. Nope, sure doesn't. Uh, the last part, which is labeled here, is called the metaphysis or metaphysis. Metaphysis. It's basically in between the diaphysis and the epiphysis. And so it's just this kind of, it's the, the region where the two get glued together. Okay, now the epiphysis is kind of important because of the epi epiphyseal line. It's really hard to say these words over and over again. The epiphyseal line, as you can see from this x-ray right here, is this area where the bone grows. So it shows where the bone was. Seriously? Uh, hummingbirds, they're going to come pile me right in the head. Uh, this shows where the bone was, and there's supposed to be the word growing. Oh, never mind. There it is. It's right there. How did I not see that? Shows where the bone was growing during childhood. So what happens is this area grows this way, this area grows that way, and it pushes the bone apart, which gives you more height and length in your bones. Same thing for both of them. And so this plate, uh, well, it's a plate when it's still growing because it's made out of hyaline cartilage and it grows to lengthen the bone. But once it fuses and it becomes solidified with bone, then it becomes a line. So it starts out as a plate. So you guys all have plates. I have a line because I'm not growing anymore. I'm shrinking a little, which is kind of sad. So in x-rays, if you see there's space in between, it's an epiphyseal plate and the person's probably 18 or under. But if it's a solid thing and you just see a white line, then it's the epiphyseal line, which means they are done growing. Okay, membranes that cover the bones. We have the periosteum, peri meaning around the outside, osteum, which means bone. So you have a uh, periosteum, has a double layer, an inside and an outer layer that is made out of dense irregular connective tissue. Why? Because it is tough. That's tough stuff. So outside of your bone, you have this really thin tissue, um, but it's very tough that surrounds the outer layer of the bone and just kind of holds it all together. So the outer layer is regular connective, but the inner layer, we have osteoblast, remember, which build, and osteoclasts, which break down. And so on the inner layer here, we've got all the osteoblasts and osteoclasts, so they can break and build the bone from the outside. But we need to get some nutrition in there, and so there are little holes, you can see right there, where blood vessels can go and enter through 
the periosteum and end up going into the bone. We call that a nutrient foramen, because remember, foramen means hole. And so the nutrient foramen is a hole for nutrients to go through, through the periosteum where um, arteries and veins and even blood, uh, lymphatic vessels and nervous tissue can get in and infiltrate the bone. So yes, if you break a bone, bones bleed. They can because if you break these vessels here. It's getting darker out here. I don't know if you guys can still see me or not. Now when I pull the periosteum away, here you can see the outer and inner layers here. If, when I pull it away, it's actually kind of stuck by these um, really tough tufts of fiber called Sharpay's fibers or perforating fibers. We'll just go with this one, Sharpay's fibers. And they're layers of collagen that basically glue the periosteum to the bone. So you can kind of think of it as bone glue and it's holding it on really tight. So as you pull the periosteum off, you'll see these little fibers uh, pull away from the bone. Then we have the endosteum, which is very similar to the periosteum, but instead of being on the outside, it's on the inside. And it lines every single little trabeculae, trabeculae that you find inside of there. So it's like if someone shellacked the inside of the bone. So that's the endosteum, covers the inside of the bone, lines all the canals. So even where the blood vessel comes in and works its way through, that is also lined with, ah, bug, endosteum. Um, short flat bones have the same idea, um, just a little bit more simplified because there's no hollow cavity inside. So all thin plates of periosteum covered compact bone on the outside, endosteum on the inside. So we still have periosteum on the outside and we still have endosteum lining everything on the inside. So that's no different. Uh, what's different is that we call the spongy bone on the inside of flat bones, we call it diploe and two little dots right there. It doesn't pop on my uh, my typewriter. So we've got the compact bone. It's like a sandwich. It's a compact bone sandwich is what it is. Uh, or a spongy bone sandwich. The spongy bone being the meat on the inside. The compact bone being the bread on the outside. So on the outside we've got two layers of the periosteum. Then we have the endosteum which is lining the inside. Compact bone. So no hollow cavities, no medullary cavities, uh, no marrow. Now, inside of the bone, where we do have the diploe or the marrow, uh, we do find flies. I'm outside. Can you tell? We do have um, uh, s some hemo hematopoietic tissues, which means blood-making tissues. In long bones, this is found, the red marrow, which makes blood, is found within the trabecular cavities of the spongy bone. So it's in, if you remember the structure of the bone, nee, 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 nee. so it would be in here, in here, in here, in here, not in there. But in a flat bone, which is pretty much all spongy bone, we find it in the whole entire thing. So your whole entire skull is making blood for you as we speak. In babies, the red marrow is pretty much the whole entire of their bones, uh, the whole inside. And so uh, pretty much all of babies is making tons of red bone marrow, uh, red blood cells until they're about three months old or so. In adults, the only place we find it is in uh, your hip bones, the head of your femur, your sternum, your humerus, and uh, then it eventually gets filled up with yellow marrow. Although if you're severely anemic, which means you're not making enough blood or don't have enough iron, you can revert your yellow marrow back to red marrow, which I think is pretty spiffy. Okay, up next, microscopic anatomy of the bone. So we'll see you up next on 4-4. Bye-bye.